Hello everyone, it's Masood. Welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be Emergency Medicine Board Exam, High Yield Facts Part 8. If you are an emergency medicine resident, this is very high yield for the in-training exam, which is coming up in just a few weeks. And if you just graduated from your EM residency, this information is also high yield for the ABM qualifying exam, which is necessary for board certification. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all of my latest videos. Let's go ahead and jump into it. First high yield fact here, night vision loss is associated with blank. If you see this on the boards, night vision loss, I want you to associate that with vitamin A deficiency. What is the most common malignant brain tumor in children? This is something that we're hopefully not seeing too much, but it's just one of those random high yield factoids. The most common malignant brain tumor in children is medulloblastoma. Chest wall rigidity can be a side effect of what medication? This can be a side effect of a few things, but the one that I want you to know is IV fentanyl. Those IV drug users, if they are using fentanyl, you may see chest wall rigidity. This is also sometimes called fentanyl-induced chest wall rigidity, and it's also sometimes called wooden chest syndrome. So just know that IV fentanyl, chest wall rigidity, know that association. What is the most common cause of a transudative pleural effusion? This is going to be heart failure. What is the toxic level for acetaminophen ingestion? This is something, you know, we could probably just look up during shift, but for the boards, we do need to know a dosage. It's going to be 150 milligrams per kilogram. So for the average adult, that math kind of works out to somewhere between 10 to 12 grams. Just know that is the toxic level for acetaminophen ingestion, 150 milligrams per kilogram. What is the most common site of osteosarcoma in children? This is going to be the distal femur. Osteosarcoma, a really aggressive bone cancer, typically occurs in the long bones, and of those long bones, the most common site that we see in children is the distal femur. Which coronary artery is most likely to be involved in an aortic dissection? Some of you may know this. It's the right coronary artery that is most likely to be involved in an aortic dissection. That's why some people say that an aortic dissection can mimic an inferior STEMI because you're damaging that right coronary artery. So you may see similar changes on the ECG. So just know that association, those ST elevations in the inferior leads. Sure, it could be a right-sided infarction, an inferior STEMI, but it could also be aortic dissection. Acidic burns to the eye cause which type of necrosis? Go all the way back to medical school, the different types of necrosis. Acidic burns can lead to coagulation necrosis. The reason for this is that acidic burns cause denaturation of proteins, which actually creates an eschar that limits penetration of the acidic material into the deeper tissue. So acidic burns to the eye, coagulation necrosis. On the flip side of that, alkaline burns to the eye cause which type of necrosis this is actually a liquefactive necrosis and the process here is that yes there is denaturing of proteins but there's also saponification of fats and this leads to more severe deeper burns really important to know that for the boards but also for real life acidic burns coagulation necrosis not as severe alkaline burns liquefactive necrosis tends to be more severe deeper burns what part of the esophagus does Boerhaave syndrome typically involve? Most of us probably know it's the distal esophagus, but that's not going to be enough for the boards. We need to know it is the posterior lateral aspect of the distal esophagus. So Boerhaave syndrome most likely to affect the posterior lateral aspect of that distal esophagus, that lower one third. Cricothyrotomy is contraindicated below what age? As a general rule of thumb, it's contraindicated below 10 years old. Some resources may say below 12 years old. I've seen other resources say 10. I've seen board questions that have showed that. So just know cricothyrotomy is contraindicated below 10 years old. Do not do it on those young kids. What is the most common infectious cause of myocarditis in the United States? It's actually parvovirus B19, one of those viruses we maybe don't think of too much, is the most common cause of infectious myocarditis in the United States. Human herpes virus type 6 is also up there. It's close number 2, but parvovirus B19 is the big one, the big infectious cause. Which pole of the tonsil is most commonly affected by a peritonsillar abscess? Most of us probably know this one. It is the superior pole of the tonsil that is most commonly affected by a peritonsillar abscess. That's one of the main reasons why we locate the superior pole for drainage of these peritonsillar abscesses. So just know that most commonly affected part of the tonsil is the superior pole when it comes to a peritonsillar abscess. Diffuse punctate corneal lesions seen on a fluorescein stain are suggestive of blank. This is going to be suggestive of ultraviolet keratitis. The classic vignette is a patient goes skiing, they're not wearing the proper protective eyewear, all that white snow is reflecting the light, making it really bright, and you can get that ultraviolet keratitis. Here is that visual stimulus, you can see all of these diffuse 
punctate lesions. It's also called superficial punctate keratitis. So just know that association and know this image as well. CNS lymphoma is commonly associated with what organism? This is actually going to be Epstein-Barr virus. There are not a lot of viruses out there that are associated with cancer or neoplastic processes. So this is one of the important ones that we need to know. CNS lymphoma, you want to make that association with Epstein-Barr virus. What is the treatment for cryptococcal meningitis? The main treatment that is seen is flucytosine plus amphotericin B. Cryptococcal meningitis, not very common. It was actually the background of the main title slide if you go back and take a look at that. But if we're seeing cryptococcal meningitis, the treatment for the most part is going to be flucytosine and amphotericin B. Fluconazole is also an option, but technically it's only fungus static instead of fungicidal. It's not killing the fungi. So cryptococcal meningitis, we're typically going with flucytosine and amphotericin B. What is the most common cause of acute kidney injury in children? This is actually hemolytic uremic syndrome. Definitely need to know this. We need to know that triad. Remember, the triad for hemolytic uremic syndrome is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and then uremia or renal damage. We need to know that association. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, most common cause of acute kidney injury in children. What is the end point for treating cholinergic toxicity? There's a couple different answers you could put here, but the primary one that's seen is the drying of bronchial secretions. So if you have a patient with a cholinergic toxicity, you're treating that, when is the best time to stop? It's really when you have drying of bronchial secretions. Some other resources may say when oxygenation is adequate, but those two things kind of go hand in hand. As you're drying up those bronchial secretions, you should be having improved oxygenation as well. What is the scientific name for the black widow spider? This is something that's seen on emergency medicine boards all the time. These black widow spider bites, we need to know all about that hourglass appearance. And we also need to know the scientific name because I have seen it come up on questions, unfortunately. So just try to remember it. Black widow spider is Latrodectus mactans. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Just try to remember that association. If you see that on the exam, that is a black widow spider. Moving on now, what is the first line treatment for lymphogranuloma venarium? This is one of those less common sexually transmitted infections. If you can remember the cause, you can hopefully remember the treatment. Lymphogranuloma venarium is typically caused by chlamydia, trachomatis, and the treatment is therefore doxycycline. What common plant, when ingested, can cause digoxin toxicity? Another one of those toxicology questions that's commonly discussed. It's pretty high yield for the boards. It is foxglove. Foxglove is the plant that if it's ingested, if it's mixed in a tea, that kind of thing can cause digoxin toxicity and cause some cardiac issues. And another visual stimulus here is that foxglove picture. Very classic if you see it. What laboratory marker correlates with severity of heat stroke? There's a couple different arguments that could be made here. Maybe it's a lactate, maybe it's a CK. The one that's most commonly seen actually is transaminitis. So your ALT, your AST, you know, that is the main thing that we see correlating with the severity of a heat stroke. The higher it is, the higher those liver enzymes are, the more severe the heat stroke. Just another little random factoid for you to know. Also maybe a helpful pearl if you do see it in the department. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Click here on the left to see Emergency Medicine Board Exam High Yield Facts Part 7, the video right before this, and click here on the right to watch the entire playlist. Definitely recommend doing that before the in-training exam. Good luck on it, and I will catch you in the next video.